everybody, the Network Berg here. Welcome back to the channel. Apologies for not uploading any videos recently. Unfortunately, I have been a bit busy uh, in real life with a few commitments. I actually went and did my MTC INE certification. So I do have the Mikrotik MTC INE now. It's a really good cert to have. If you are in Mikrotix, your company uses them, or perhaps you want to build your own WISP or anything like that, I highly suggest that you also try and pursue that certificate. You'll have to get your MTC NA, MTC RE, and then the INE. And you'll learn a lot about all the different protocols that we can use on Mikrotik. Really good stuff. Um, but we are not here to discuss that in this video. Um, today, I'd like to actually discuss, it is Mikrotik related, but it is regarding EOIP. This is more a beginner friendly video. There's a lot happening, as you can see on the screen already, and I'm not going to overwhelm you with a lot of information. I just want to uh, give you some insight on what EOIP is, how it works, and how we can make it work for us. Because I'm sure that you, uh, if you're in the ISP world, or maybe you are in the networking world in general, you'll hear people talking about MPLS and VPLS and spanning the layer two connectivity and all that. Um, so Mikrotik has a proprietary protocol that they use called EOIP that works between Mikrotix that accomplishes a lot that VPLS does as well. It isn't VPLS, let's just get it out the way, and it does have a lot of drawbacks as well, but it has pros as well, being that it works straight over layer three. So you are able to establish basically a switch port between two routers so that you could carry Ethernet frames across that EOIP tunnel. Um, it's very useful if, if you're maybe having to do stuff like disaster recovery and you want to use the same subnet on both sites. It might be useful for a few other use cases, such as let's say your customer is moving premises and they have a range that they need to move staggered. So they don't want to just pick up all their servers and move it across to the different site in one go because that might affect their own systems or their clients and they just want to do it in a staggered manner um, so what you could do in that case as well is you could potentially just bring in an EOIP tunnel span the range at both locations and then you could systematically bring whatever servers across to the new building while retaining all the connectivity at the old building um, it's really cool uh, you could also do such stuff like a VRRP over this EOIP tunnel so that if the one router was to go down, um, all your devices wouldn't just lose connectivity. They would uh, then use the VRRP IP of the router on their side to still retain connectivity. Um, but now I am throwing a lot of terms at you. I don't want it to be a strange situation. I just want to show you what EOIP is and how we can configure it so that you can use it in maybe your own uh, offices or company. So for EOIP, the first thing we need is just layer three connectivity between our two sites. So I've got a very basic setup here. I've got a CE here, customer equipment, and another CE here. And then between them, I've got my provider edge, which will be, you can think of that as my core router. And both routers already have some slash 30 IPs configured between them. They've already got default routes set up on them, and they're actually able to ping each other's WAN IPs already. So we know there's layer three connectivity. So that is the biggest thing that we need to get this working. Secondly is we need to do the configuration. So your configuration is going to look very similar on both ends. It might just be that the tunnel IPs will differentiate. So I'll just quickly jump into Winbox. I've already got both routers open here. And again, I'm doing this on GNS3. I highly recommend that you do get GNS3 if you want to uh, do your own labs like this. It will help you understand concepts better. I'll post a link to my blog where I do give you step-by-step -step guides on how to install GNS3. And importing a Mikrotik router is really easy and simple. Okay, so let's just set up our EOIP tunnel. I'm on CE1. We go to the interfaces. We go to EOIP tunnel. We click the add button. We can give it a name. So I can call this uh, EIP tunnel to CE2. It's giving itself a virtual MAC address there, which it will use to send the frames across. 
remote address. So this is very important. This will specify the tunnel IP that we want to connect to. So in my case, it was 10.0.2.2. That is the IP address of CE2's WAN address. You can see it there as well. The other important bit for your IP is your tunnel ID. This has to be the same on both ends. So in my case, I'm just going to make it 101, but you could leave it on zero. It doesn't do anything. But if there's a mismatch, you will have some connectivity issues. Okay, our tunnel is connected and it is up. So let's just do it on the other end as well. The IP tunnel to CE1. Same virtual MAC address. Now my remote address will be the address of the WAN IP for CE1. 10, 0, 1, 1. No, that's two. Apologies. One is my PE's IP. And then the tunnel ID, I made that 101. And we can apply this. Now, in theory, our EOIP tunnel is actually up. It is able to communicate and they can see each other as well. But we are not able to actually pass any frames just yet. Um, what we can do is if we go into our IP neighbors, you will see the Mikrotik popped up on the EOIP tunnel. And we'd be able to Mac telnet to this as well. But we want to do a bit more. So I've got a few networks configured uh, on both ends. Let's just look at our addresses. But I've got uh, a VLAN also for some servers that I want to do. And then I've got a LAN range, something that you might see at the client site as well. So let's just try and span across this LAN range. So 192.168.0.1 slash 24. Um, again, we're not actually spanning the, the IP range across, it's the VLANs that we're sending across. It's the frames we allow to communicate. So in theory, I'm kind of just going to be sending VLAN 1 across uh, this EOIP tunnel, or more specifically, the interface, Ether2, where I've got that broadcast domain on. So let's go back into EOIP tunnel. We don't want to do it there, we want to go to our bridge. It's very similar to when you're bridging switch ports. So you want them all to just, um, they don't have to leave an interface. They can just switch between each other. So let's just call this bridge EOIP. We can just apply that. And then inside our bridge, we need to assign our ports. So let's assign ether2, because that's where my LAN IP address is configured on. And then Remember, we're, it's just like the switch ports that we're bridging. Uh, treat the EOIP as an additional switch port. We can select our EOIP tunnel interface that we created, put it on the bridge, apply it. Now you'll see it will state to an RS state. Very good, this is what we want. Let's go into the other router, the CE2, add the same bridge here. Bridge EOIP and we can add our ports we're adding ether2 again and we're also going to be adding the eoip tunnel so in theory we have spanned our range across or our vlan and we should be able to send frames across if we look at our topology again i've got ce1 i've got a switch here it's just got some VLAN for the servers, but it's all untagged for the computers. And then here's a computer that's in that LAN range as well. So we know on CE1, 192.168.0.1 resides. On CE2, that IP doesn't live, but let's go into PC1 quickly. Let's quickly run a ping, 192.168.0.1. I can ping my default gateway. This PC has an IP address of dot four. So I've got another PC here, same in same type of setup. It's also just a switch with a VLAN for the server, untagged for VLAN one. And it also just goes straight into ether two. If you remember, we brought that port into that EOIP bridge that we created. So let's jump onto PC2. IF config. 
and this thing's IP address is 0 0.5. And we know that the other computer was 0 0.4. It's also using dot one as a default gateway, ping 192.168.0.1. Okay, we're not able to ping just yet. I can ping dot four, but I cannot ping dot one. Okay, it's probably just a bit of a GNS bug. You will see that sometimes in GNS, just restart your ping, or you might have to just uh, repatch the cable. It, I've seen it happen. Don't worry too much about it if it happens with you. Um, <laughs> it can get confusing sometimes. You might underestimate or you might overthink an issue and it might be as simple as just redoing the ping. So we can confirm we've got IP connectivity from PC2 to the CE1 as well as PC1. If we go on to CE2, you'll see that the IP address is not configured on there. So it's not like we, um, it's not as if we played a trick or anything, the IP address isn't there. It's all gone over that EOIP tunnel where we're able to see the PC1. And that's very useful. We've, we span that whole VLAN across. We span VLAN 1 from one side to the other without causing any issues. So let's just um, run another ping. I just want to show you the traffic when we torch the interface as well. Let's ping.4. Let's jump onto router 1 again. And if we go onto our interfaces, we should be able to torch our tunnel. And there we can already see there's dot five communicating with dot four. And it's as easy as that. We've spanned it across by just creating EOIP tunnels on both routers, creating a bridge on both routers and adding the ports that we want to uh, span across. And that's it. That is EOIP. Uh, it's very easy to also just do a VLAN. It's exactly the same concept. We go into our bridge and then in the ports, we just add our VLAN. So in this case, it's VLAN five, apply, and I'll do it on the other router as well. Interface, no, bridge, ports, plus, and then we add VLAN five inside the bridge. And now VLAN 5 will also be spanned across. It will send frames for VLAN 5. The routers will get it and they will send it through the ports that are tagged for VLAN 5 where it continues like a normal switch. Um, so if I had servers now, and let me jump onto those machines. Server 1. And I already know I have config. 172.24.0.10. The server at server 2 is dot 11. Let's just see if we can ping it. 172.24.0.11. And we can ping it. So we've spanned that VLAN across as well. So anything that was behind the switches is also now reachable, which is useful for us for something in a data center environment, or in this case where we needed to move a client server across. So now we have the same broadcast domains live at two different locations on two different routers without interfering with connectivity. There's a lot that we could do to build up on that. We could, like I said, um, add VRRP to the mix so that we've got dynamic, uh, well, failover on layer two. And then we could also add BGP or an, another layer three routing protocol to both CEs from the PE so that in the event that one goes down, the routes just update automatically and then your sites will still retain network or internet connectivity, which is really useful. Um, that is what I wanted to show you as a baseline for EOIP. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask it. Else, go check out the blog. There are more videos on there as well, as well as other articles, <coughs> apologies, for you to go over. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, if you don't mind, could you subscribe to the channel or like this video and share it with your friends? It does help grow the channel and I appreciate it so much. Thanks again.